Are you well? I'm fine, thanks, Chief. You've been in practice for a very long time. Just tell us briefly why you believe you are the one to be recommended for appointment. Well, Chief Justice, uh, you've said for a very long time, I'm not so sure it's been a long, very long time, but it's been some time that I've been in the field of law. And I think at this stage, uh, I ought to have acquired uh, some form of experience which I can share with the with my country, not only confined finding my services to the Pretoria, although I do go to other divisions, but uh, if I'm a judge, then I'm able to contribute not only by confining myself to the division where I'm appointed, but if you write judgments, then you, you, then you subject yourself to criticism by the uh, juries, by the lecturers at the universities and so on. So in that manner, you can contribute towards the development of the law. By the way, for how many years have you been a senior counsel? This is my 11th year. Yes. And you've acted uh, as a judge severally? Since 2003. Yes. Very well. Uh, DJP? Thank you, Chief Justice. Good morning, uh, Mr. Tokota. Good morning, uh, Commissioner. I see that you have a very long career in the Transkai and in the Siskai. In fact, it seems to be your home. You were yes, DJ. Yes, DJP. So, do I take it that you want to come home? I do, DJP. <laughs> um, You've acted on sev in several occasions in the Eastern Cape, is that correct? That is correct. You've also, if I remember correctly, helped us out in Bisho towards the end of last year, on your last occasion when you, you acted, is that correct? Even this year. Yes, yeah. And I remember on a Friday afternoon phoning you to, to ask you if you could take over the motion court for the following week yes. to the illness or some other mishap. Yes, DJ. But to the judge who was supposed to do that court, and you agreed to, to take over the court. Always willing to. Yes, yes I must Sister. say your, your, your energy for work is, is something that I have to commend you, commend you on. Um, Thank you, DJ. I see from your questionnaire that you have filled in that you, um, that you have properties and a fleet of cars that you have to sell. Yes, DJP. And that, uh, that may require some time in order to do that before you can officially take up your appointment. Should we recommend you? Should you be recommended for appointment? It may take some time. It may depend. Mm. But is I've estimated not more than nine months. October is that the maximum time? That's the maximum time. But I, I'm willing to make myself available even before that. Should it happen that I dispose of them earlier, let's say by June. Then I can always make a call and say that I'm available if you want me to act until such time that my, my appointment takes effect. So, I gather, so it's flexible. I gather from the fact that you want to liquidate your assets, you, you're residing in Pretoria? Right? I reside in Pretoria. I've got two properties in Pretoria. One is an agricultural holding. So I gather from that that you intend moving permanently to I intend the moving Cape. permanently to the Eastern Cape. So I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Mr. Thank you. Thank you, DJP. Premier? No, I'm covered, uh, uh, Judge President. Uh, Thank you very much, Justice. Premier. Uh, Commissioner Malema? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry to ask this question. How old are you now? I'm 64, uh, Commissioner Malema. And um, now... You don't have you to be sorry. If you are in a position of uh, appointing two people out of three, very good people, black African female, a 44-year-old African male, and a 64-year-old into the bench, 
all qualified, well experienced, what will you do? Well, it's not for me to say. Uh, it's for the JSU to decide if they want to appoint the younger one is much better. If she's quiet, equally the same experience as the old one, it's all right. Don't have a problem with that, even with myself. But statutorily, I still have 10 years to render my services as a judge. So there's more time. We're not talking about the same subject. I'm talking, I'm talking about something else, and you're talking about the JC. I'm talking about you, and you cannot be a JC. You are in a position where you must choose two people, and I've given you this scenario. What options will you take in the interest of empowering the young ones to ensure that we build and continue to uh, grow potential young judges and uh, in the situation where we are also th thriving for gender empowerment and given the fact that we also have a a 64-year-old, 64-44, and a female. What will you do in that scenario? I wouldn't know if I would ever be in that situation, but it yep. all depends on what you want. If you, I, I would imagine that the age would not be the only criteria you can measure your decision. And uh, you would have some other aspects to take into account, but... It really depends on you, but empowerment of women and so is what I also encourage young people. In fact, maybe that's why I stayed longer in the uh, as a silk. That was my aim as a silk, was to empower my people. For that matter, I have now, as I speak, there are three senior council, uh, one of whom is a, you know, the fourth one is a white so I've empowered a lot of uh, young people as, uh, in, the, in, the, in the field as, as advocates. I, the, 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 the male ones are countless. Senior, some of them are judges for that matter. So I, I, I wouldn't really have an objection if you, if, for instance, let's take my case now. If you have a young female who is well experienced like myself and you feel that she should take the position, I don't have a problem with that. Well, the age difference ordinarily will suggest that there will never be experience like yourself because you had an advantage of age and they are much more younger than you. But when it comes to testing them they are on the understanding of the law and all the requirements, all the three of you are superb. It's what we are looking for. The only thing we are left with now is gender and age it will be ideal for the judiciary to actually get a much more younger person if it had to choose between the two because it makes more sense that they will stay longer uh, they will continue to serve and uh, that is will, that will be like an investment, actually, uh, as it were, in the judicial. Well, that's fine. One of my experiences is that actually judges don't retire. You still have judges who are way beyond 75 years. They're still working in the service in the sense that they, they are appointed in commissions, they're appointed in various capacities, and uh, so a judge doesn't really retire as such. You, you remain a judge until you die. So you, you remain, in my view, to be committed to that uh, profession, if I can call it that, of a judge. What is your take on Muti? Muti? Yeah. Muti, the, the African herb. <laughs> Well, whether you believe or not, there, there, there is a, a talk of Umuti. I personally don't have any uh, thing to express on that, my view on that.
So you think people can take muti and uh, get engaged in different activities because they are motivated by muti? Yeah, I don't believe in muti and for your information. I don't believe in it. And you don't think that uh, people can be motivated in, in whatever way possible by muti? They can get muti and as a result of Muti engaging in an activity because they are motivated by Muti? My experience, both as a magistrate and as a, we put it that, as an adult African, I know that blacks, a certain sectors of the black people believe in Muti. And my view is that whatever you believe in, it works for you. Some people believe in church, in a certain categories of churches, and those churches, they... Uh, they advance their interests and so on, so things work for them. Some people believe in Muti, and in their view, they have faith in that, and it works for them. So it all depends on your belief. Personally, I don't believe in Muti. I don't get involved in that. But, can but people... I cannot deny that the black people, there are certain categories of people in black communities who believe in Muti. And I don't condemn them for doing that. I don't... Uh, share any views to say they, 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 they're wrong in that. It's like church, as I say. But do you think a group of people can act because they are motivated by Muti? Get into action because they are influenced by Muti? Well, I wouldn't venture to, uh, eh? to know what the group... Because you know what? In my experience is that people act differently. When you, when, you act as in, when you have an individual mind, you've got that mind, you exercise your, 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 your discretion in accordance with what you believe in. But a group mind, you must act as a group, and you've got a group mind. Psychologists will tell you how those people behave. I'm not a psychologist, so I can't be in a position to say, if these people have this belief, then they must behave in this way. I'm not a psychologist, I'm sorry to say. I think maybe if I may, do you believe that this is what I think uh, uh, Commissioner Malema is getting to? Do you know it to be the position or not that some African people believe that there is power in Muti which could either protect them or allow them to do? Uh, certain things, is it, is it a practice that you can relate to as an African person with your experience? That's part of the question. It may not be the whole question, but as a matter of practice, do you know it to be the case that an African person can apply Muti, confident, for instance, that the bullet won't enter? We had a candidate one day at the JSC saying, the Muti knows that you can apply a certain Muti even if they fire at you. The bullet won't enter. He was applying for a labor court uh, position. So, can you relate to that? No, I'm sorry, CJ. I can't relate to that. But I know in the Marikana Commission, there was that, uh, if, if that is uh, aimed at uh, directing at that, there was those, that allegation that people have believed that they would be protected, they'd used the Muti and so on. We have had that evidence. And you signed a report that say that blamed that workers acted because they were motivated by Muti. Is there a clause where we said in that report that those workers were motivated by Muti? Yes. I don't remember it. So you signed things that you don't remember? No, I don't remember. We never said, as far as I'm concerned, we didn't say that those people did what they did because they were motivated <coughs> by Muti. That the report... There were a lot of allegations in that regard. <clears throat> Fortunately, the three of us didn't believe in, in Muti. That is Judge Falam and then uh, 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 Advocate Embranch has seen. But the allegation was there. Now, can you explain the judgment where you recently say, uh, gave a judgment? and absolved a white person who had put a black guy in a container. No, 
now the way I was trained, uh, right from the start, when I came from the university, I never prosecuted. I, must, I missed that opportunity to prosecute. I was a magistrate immediately, right from the university. My train of mind is that you don't look at who is this. Is it a white person? Is it a black or whatever? You don't look at, you look at the facts and you interpret the law in accordance with what you believe is the correct position, regardless of whether it's a white or black. You don't look at the colors. Otherwise, <laughs> a judicial officer who does that, then it can pose a danger to certain societies because then you have also to uh, preside over certain cases which may involve certain religious beliefs and if you don't believe in this one, then you have to uh, give judgment in favor of this one which you believe. You've just got to, all what you have to do as a judge is the ability to identify the issues from the facts given to you in civil trial matters, even including criminal matters for that matter. It's very difficult to evaluate evidence and come to the accurate decision. But you try your best with your experience to evaluate facts and then once you have identified the issues, then you apply the law. You don't look at who is this, who represents who that, who, who is the plaintiff, who is the defendant. That you don't consider as a judicial officer. That's my view as a judicial officer anyway. No, that's not the question. I want you to explain that issue where a white guy, you put a black guy in a container and there was nothing wrong? In your view, I, I hear what issue. you are saying. And the issue was defamation in that case. You're not talking, we're not talking about putting a guy in a, in a container and then find a judgment in that regard. No, that was not the issue. The issue was defamation by the <laughs> newspaper, by the way, not the guy put in the, uh, in the container. That was the issue. Now, as a judicial officer, it's always important <laughs> to look at the law. But it is equally important to look at the, 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 the strong, the people who appear before you may come from a very strong background. For instance, males can always dominate females. And whites can always have got a history of having dominated blacks. And to want to ignore all that, that this one comes from a position of authority, can be misleading at times. <laughs> I'm not too sure. You know, in my view, there are ten commandments of a judicial officer. One of which is impartiality. One of which is independence. One of which is patience. One of which is prompt. Uh, I, the, 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 the ten of them, which I have, I don't want to waste it. God, the, the, this, the time of this house. I'm sorry about that. So you don't look at who is bringing this, who is, you look at the facts. Like I said, I'm not going to change that. You don't look at the background. That's something which you can apply and, and uh, maybe in Shambi, maybe when you <laughs> look at the, <laughs> you excuse my language. Maybe when it comes to uh, say mitigation of sentence, you may look at the background. He stole bread. The background is that they don't have food. They're living in shacks and so on. So I don't have to, he has committed an offense, but I don't have to send him to jail. Those are the factors you can look at, the background. Only when you're dealing with situations like that. When we talk several matters, like the one you've, you've just referred to, you don't look at that. You don't look at What's your background? What's your, where do you come from? Okay, if you come from a disadvantage, then I must give judgment in your favor. That's not how you apply the law. That's not how I understand the application of the law anyway. But you just agreed that it is important to look at background because without taking into consideration the background of where we come from, you might give a judgment which perpetuates the inequalities that we have been subjected to as a country. And uh, therefore, it is permissible in law to look at the background. You just said that yourself. Yeah, 
Yes, I've told you under what circumstances, not in all the cases. i am told you under what circumstances you look at the background. Even the criminal matters, you look at the situation, the, the nature of the offense uh, 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 committed by the person. You can't say because this man, he has murdered a person. Okay, he comes from a disadvantaged uh, background. I can't sentence him to jail. No, you can't do that. So I'm telling you the circumstances under which you can look at the background. But it will be in... Otherwise, let me, let me sorry to cut you. Otherwise, if you look at the background, you will look at this, they say it's a criminal. Um, there's a background, this, the uh, previous convictions have now been handed up. The background of that is that this man has committed criminal offenses. You look at that, you take that into account, but that is after your finding of guilty. You don't look at it whilst before you, you make a finding on the issues, you see. But the point I'm making, it is in the context of racism that in taking into consideration where our country comes from, you can't ignore the parties that appear before you, particularly in a matter that can perpetuate uh, racism in this country. I'm not talking about the matter now that you dealt with. We're talking about, as a judicial officer, you can't act ignorant <clears throat> and adjudicate on a matter based, based only on the facts before you neglecting the background of where we come from as a country. <laughs> that, that, that's not what I, I was trained. No. I act in also in these divisions. I, the, none of the uh, senior judges trained me in that way, that you must look at the background first before you decide the facts. No. That's not that how I was trained. I was a magistrate for 15 years, the, four of which I was training magistrate myself in the whole country. So I never said to them, before you come to a decision in the matter, look at the background, ignore the facts. Look at the background. Oh, that one is a white, he was a racist. Okay, let me come to the facts. You were a racist, therefore, I'm giving judgment against you. That you don't do as a man. <laughs> which, 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 it's which? It's not permissible in law anyway. There is the head of the judiciary. He will agree with me that it's not permissible in law. You are magistrate 15 years, which years? Since 19, for that matter, since I may say, I may start off, since 1979, I had not yet even qualified. In 1979, I had come back after the, the Steve Biko incident had had an effect on me, so I didn't pass my law degree. So in 1979, I had to come back and work, but I was immediately appointed as an acting magistrate for the whole year. And then in 19, from 1980, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, 1978, it was in 1978, I'm sorry about that. 1979, I went to the university again. And then I, from 1980, that's when I started permanently on the bench. And then who trained you? Because you're, you've got this pride 15 years of being a magistrate. Who trained you? The judicial officers. I don't want you, I don't want you to drive me to racism. I'm sorry, please. Oh, but you are trained by <laughs> apartheid mechanism. Trained <laughs> institutions. <laughs> you know what? Let me just tell you a, a little story. There's an advocate now. There was an attorney who was a black attorney who was being... Uh, there was an application to, uh, to strike him off the roll because he has not uh, uh, complied with the legal profession. I had to represent him. The papers were already drawn. The papers were saying this court is an apartheid uh, regime court. The judges are apartheid, are racist. I'm not supposed to be subjected to them. The first thing that the judge asked me, I said to him, how, how do you draft papers like this? And then he said, no, Togota, I want you to represent me. Then it's the first thing that the judge asked me, Mrs. Togota, these papers, do you agree with them? I said, no, I don't. I don't agree with that. Apartheid and no apartheid. The law is law. 
if it was apartheid law, it was law at that stage. And everybody had to go along that law. We, not that you liked it. You didn't have, you, even now, I cannot guarantee that everybody likes the law. You only like the law when it is in your favor. When it's not in your favor, say, ooh, this government. That's what happens in life. But you're an apartheid magistrate. Well, call me what you like. I was working at that stage, but I can tell you one thing I can tell you. I gained the experience. And you were trained by apartheid government to be a magistrate. Ah, call it what you like. And uh, uh, you didn't see anything wrong with that apartheid training. Let's assume I see something wrong. What should I have done? Should I said, I'm not going to be a magistrate in this era because you're apartheid. Shouldn't I have done, should I have done that? I'm asking, you were trained by apartheid regime to be a magistrate. Was there something wrong with that apartheid system? The law is the law. So it's not for me. I don't make laws. Parliament makes laws. The court, even though those apartheid laws, they were not uh, rigidly enforced by some judges, for example. Some judges didn't agree. They, that's why you have an opportunity as a judge to develop the law. These days it's even better because there's constitution. Anything which is inconsistent with the constitution, then it's bad law. You don't apply it. So it's no use taking us back to the upper date. Even the customary law, as long as it is consistent with the Bill of Rights, then, <laughs> then you can apply it. It's, it's, it's it's, it's permissible in law, it's permissible in terms of the constitution, but if you want to change it, you change it only in, in accordance with the Bill of Rights. As you round up, Commissioner Malema. Was there something wrong with apartheid? <laughs> yes. What have you done? <laughs> what do you expect me to do as a magistrate? To strike and say there's something wrong here? Yeah? Thank you, CJ. Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> um, you still want to? Commissioner Nzebeza? Um, <clears throat> thank you, Chief Justice. Um, Advocate Togota, yes, I just wanted to follow up on, uh, on your... on your time as a magistrate in the, in the Eastern Cape. <coughs> Those of us who were practicing in that place at that time were astounded by certain decisions that you took given that you were a magistrate. And they seemed at a time like that, that they were going against the grain. One was when it appeared you were being ordered by the Pandustan minister to complete a trial. And you took a position, I want you to tell us in your own words, how you decided that. Thank you, Commissioner Nsabeza. I remember very well. That time, there was a change in the apartheid regime where they created tricameral parliament. Yes. And then the black students embarked on strikes in the sky. I was a magistrate in Pedi then. And then they were arrested. In Zwelicha, I was phoned by the Minister of Justice then that, at that stage in Bisho. We went to the uh, Amatola Sun Hotel, had dinner there. He said to me, Togota, I want you to go and preside in the matter in Zwelicha tomorrow. And I want you to finalize that matter so that you can teach those students a lesson. So that those strikes shouldn't uh, spread. Uh, throughout the country. I said, no, it's fine, no problem. Have I got a judicial appointment? He said, yes, you'll find it there. I said, fine. Because if you go to another district, then you must have a special judicial appointment for that case. 
I said, no, fine, minister. I'll go there and preside. He said, you, you see to that, you finalize the matter. I went there. Even though there was no constitution, we still have uh, some human rights in some way. I explained their rights. They wanted legal representation. Mr. Nell was prosecuting. Yes, Mr. Nell, any objection to bail? I want to grant them uh, the, uh, the right to go and look for legal representation. Mr. Nell says, no objection. 50 rand bail, go. Quarter past nine, and I was in Mr. Kennesla's office, the chief magistrate. said, have you finished? said, yes. Oh, no, you can't. said, how can you finish such a long time? So they want a legal representation. What must I do? I'm finished for the day. I must go back to my district. Then the next thing, the following day, it was in the headlines of the dispatch, daily dispatch, the paper there. The TG phoned me. Mr. Tokoto, what happened? When that matter, I say, yeah, you didn't finish. I thought I finished the day for the day. I granted them bail. I had to write, give them a right to legal representation. Whew, then I was in trouble with that. But to cut a long story, I found them not guilty in terms of Section 174 of the Criminal Procedure Act. There was also the <clears throat> incident which also received worldwide, I mean, not worldwide, quite prominent attention about the liquor licenses. That one was also very interesting. We were called as district, I was a chief magistrate in Pedi. And the minister and the DG were the shareholders of Pedi Hotel. And then parliament passed the Regulation Act, which legalized liquor licenses. So you could get a license at the counter. As, as a magistrate, you were the representative of the government, all the departments, and the revenue office was in my office. So people were had bought licenses, and then if you go to a restaurant, you find a liquor in the fridge, everywhere else, liquor was readily available. Then the sales in the hotel dropped. Where the minister and the DG Where and the chef. minister and, yes. And then, <laughs> then we were called, all the magistrates were called. Look, we have asked the president, to repeal that proclamation, by proclamation, that act of parliament. I said, but minister, you can't repeal a, a act of parliament by, pre, by proclamation. The president doesn't have that power. He says, no. Then you must go back, see to it that those people who, have, who are selling liquors in their restaurants, they are arrested and pay admission of guilt. Well, I didn't say anything. We went back. People, the, the, people the, the next thing, following day, a lot of admissions of guilt, I refused to accept them. I said, I'm not going to sign any admission of guilt. If you say these people are guilty, take them to criminal court. In any event, in my view, that proclamation is invalid, not only because it has been pro pro promulgated by the president to repeal an act of parliament, but because... Those people have acquired rights before this proclamation. You can't just take them away like this. So I'm not going to obey this. You know what happened thereafter? I was charged with misconduct. What happened thereafter? Every lawyer came to my rescue. No, we know what's going on, Togota. The hearing took 30 minutes and I was found not guilty. I was defended by advocates and everybody because they knew my stand is like this. That's why I'm saying when I look at the facts, you cannot politically manipulate me. <laughs> Whether you call it property or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I thought that I thought that, that should balance. <laughs> I rest I rest my case. <laughs> Uh, Advocate Dogota, uh, I wish we could have you longer, but time doesn't permit your excuse. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very uh, much. <laughs> <laughs>